Child, I wish I was selling damn therapy sessions because Lord knows these real housewives of Potomac need it. But instead, here I am, peddling sea moss. Sea moss. You get your sea moss. Drop that in the description box and get your sea moss. <clears throat> Nessa girl, it's very telling that I should be calling y'all about the real housewives of Atlanta. But to be honest with you, I really don't care. I didn't bother watching it. I don't feel inclined to watch it. I haven't gotten any tweets about what's going on with it. And that's largely because there is a major shift going on in reality TV today. And that's what I want to talk about. So I want to talk about it. Here you go. Nessa girl, I woke up late because I had went down to the bar with a Honda Cars B last night and how we let us stay to the bike at about 3 o'clock in the morning. We was drinking and slapping five and doing all the things we do. So, of course, then, I can tell y'all too much of my business. Nevertheless, I slept in all day, me and him. Um, but then I woke up in a very reflective mood as it relates to the housewives and whatnot. I went to dinner last night with one of my executive, uh, executive producer TV friends. And he and I just had a very in-depth conversation about the state of reality TV, what happened on the Real Housewives of Potomac relations, uh, reunion, Nene and Andy, and so on and so forth. And then I figured there's a common thread and there's a way I can weave in Nene, Andy, Monique quitting Potomac and the shift in reality TV. I'm doing this with no notes off the cuff, but I'm good at what I do, so here it is. The conversation starts with NeNe Leaks, right? And, you know, NeNe's got this thing with Bravo right now where she's calling racism, so on and so forth. And as I, and after like watching the Potomac reunion, a lot of things were revealed to me that made me kind of dip back and say, hmm, there may be a lot of truth and credence in what it is NeNe Leaks is saying it's just hard for the masses to receive it from Nene Leaks. Um, I have to correct myself. In an earlier Potomac reunion video, I kind of went in on Monique for when she said, this little check and my husband did real good. And I processed it as her bragging. And y'all had to break it down to me in the comments that Andy was being snide. And I realized that I've been watching these shows for so long and my focus has been on the ladies that I tend to subconsciously tune Andy out because the review is never about him, it's about the ladies. And so once you guys kind of opened my eye to that, I had to go back and kind of watch things. And you know what? Y'all are right. Something was definitely askew with Andy's tone and behavior as it related to Monique and wealth and then my wheels started churning and I was thinking to myself if Erica Jane would have made a comment in reference to the check me a little and her husband having money I don't believe Andy would have ever doubled down and second guessed Tom Girardi's income I don't think that he would have ever done that to Lisa Renner. I don't think that he would have done that to Camille Grammer, despite the fact that she's divorced. I think unconsciously and subconsciously, he would have taken at face value that they're good. But there's a level of unconscious bias, which we all possess, but that led him to second guess Monique and Chris's financial situation and it lends itself to the narrative that black people can't have wealth you know what I'm saying or black people can't be rich or the black people on Bravo can't be rich without this show and we're going to talk about that because I mean let's face it 
there is a huge income and wealth disparity between many of the white house white housewives franchise and the black cast um and that holds true for them and over at mary to medicine no shade but the show is what has given many of them their wealth therefore i wonder if you know unconsciously you know andy's brain was just on autopilot and was like you black and you need this show and we made you you know what i'm saying because you take a nene leaks character and yes they are able to stand up and say we made you we gave you the life you live and it's the truth it's the truth um you look at Portia, you know what I'm saying? Granted, she was with Cordell, she got divorced, but in short, with the money, they gave you the life that you live post-divorce. Uh, you look at Kenya, from the looks of them from Michael Countertops that she had in that LA house before she moved to Atlanta and did the show for a couple seasons. Although she was popular, we gave you the life that you now live. Now, Candy, they didn't give her shit. Sheree, they gave Sheree the life she lives. And quite as it's kept, Deshaun Snow was the only one that came to the table with any real wealth as it relates to the White House wives and not all of them. And I don't watch the Jersey one at all. I don't watch the Dallas one at all. So I don't know what or what they made, what they did or did not come to the table with. But when you use uh, measure the Atlanta girls up against the Beverly Hills girls, it is safe to say that the Beverly Hills girls did not, do not need the show and their lifestyle is not affected by the check that they get from Bravo. Nevertheless, um, there was something and I'm not going to go as far as to call Andy racist. I don't know his heart. I've only met him once. But I will say there is a level of bias, conscious or unconscious, that he possesses and it showed and reared its ugly head at this Potomac reunion. As I went back and watched the reunion, it was so clear that it lends itself to the thought that maybe it is time for a fresh voice, a fresh set of eyes someone who's not vested in the stories to sit in the reunion space. And by no means am I advocating for myself, nothing like that. It, it, it was just clear that for whatever reason, Andy on this Potomac reunion lost the ability to be unbiased, which I found out through the grapevine lent itself to Monique choosing to quit the Real Housewives of Potomac. So for those, for those of you guys who don't know, Monique chose to quit. Um, she was asked back. She was asked back. Um, and after watching the third reunion, in the way it was edited and presented, she chose not to come back. And in short, uh, her feeling is, you know, it's one thing for these people not to like me, meaning my cast members, but it's a whole nother thing to feel like the machine doesn't like me either. Um, and I'm in a, I'm, I'm, I'm in a lose, lose situation either way. So since unlike some of the people on there, I don't need the money. There's no need in me even trying to fight a fight. I cannot win because you can't win against production. Um, and let me just go on and be happy and she bowed out gracefully. Um, I'm disappointed. I would have liked for her to stay, but I also recognize that people's personal health, peace, and mental sanity uh, is worth a hell of a lot more than this check, especially when you don't need it. Um, so then looking at the Monique and the Andy dynamic, this reunion dynamic, it took me back to NeNe Leakes once again. Now, NeNe is a very interesting situation and the Housewives of Atlanta is a very interesting situation. 
because it's a combination of things. It's like, okay, you know, yes, there may be some bias over there coupled with the fact that people don't like you because of your attitude and your loud mouth and your antics coupled with the fact that the show is 13 years old and at some point you got to retire from it and not working. It's a hodgepodge of factors which really makes it hard for me and a lot of people to process this whole my whole problem is they racist over there at Bravo. I think it's a very it's a very convoluted issue but part of the conversation I was having with my friend James and I've said this to y'all before is that this show has now been on for 13 years and some of y'all seem to have it twisted like I'm advocating for people to lose their check. People's income, their livelihood or well-being is the least of my concern. I'm actually taking up for y'all, the viewer, from an entertainment perspective, there legitimately is nothing else left to give from a lot of these stories. I've said it before, we've seen Riley since she was nine, she don't grew up, Candy don't got married, had two babies, got restaurants, and is now literally in the coasting years of her happy, uh, happily ever after. What more is there to get? We saw Noelle when she was little, Cynthia done got married, divorced, married again, bought a house. It puts a nice button on things. So that was my critique. My producer friend then says to me, he says, Q, I disagree. He says, I just think it's a matter of creative producing. That the cast has gotten lazy, they're simply phoning it in, and the producers are simply phoning it in. Um, and I do agree. I think the formula has ran its course. The five-woman ensemble, we're going to go to lunch, we're going to gossip. It's just gotten stale. It's gotten stale. And for anybody out there that's working at the network and in production, hear me out. You know, this isn't a negative. It creates an opportunity for success. It creates an opportunity for somebody to be innovative and create a new style of shooting docu-series because this five-woman collective, one breaks out as the lead cheerleader, one falls down as the victim, the other three are in the middle going back and forth between the two. It's gotten old. Between Basketball Wives, Married to Medicine, Real Housewives, Love and Marriage Huntsville, Carlos King's new show, The Bell Collective, Wags Atlanta, it is all the same. It's all the same at this point. All of the shows have managed to abandon the central core theme. You know, Real Housewives of Atlanta was so innovative for its time and so fresh because we hadn't seen anything like it since the lifestyles of the rich and famous. This show is supposed to be giving us a glimpse into the lives of rich people who do things that us average working class folks don't do. I can never forget and one of the most iconic moments of Housewives for me is when Kim Zosiak bought that Escalade with a check on the spot just on a whim like she was going to Target to pick up some socks. That was good for me. You know what I'm saying? We look at Atlanta now and to be honest with you, there is nothing aspirational about seeing five bitches do the same shit that we do every day. There's no lifestyle being captured. There's nothing fabulous about it. And quiet as it's kept and it's no shade because Atlanta has a lot of successful black people. But the life that the life that's being portrayed by the Atlanta Housewives on this doggone show is the same old life any average regular bitch in Atlanta lives. Um, with the exception, hold on y'all, with the exception of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, girl, I'm recording a video, Miss Jason Lee, let me call you right by it. Okay. Um, that was Jason Lee, y'all. Um, with the exception of, uh, like, Beverly Hills, those girls really live that life. So they're capturing lifestyle. But with, like, at, with Atlanta, it's like... It's like watching my own friend group go to Chili's for margaritas. It's just gotten boring. So what is it that we gonna do? You know, there's also another conversation that needs to be had, right? Because the whole Giselle Bryant, Kenya Moore character, 
Um, to be honest with you, I'm just tired of seeing it. I'm tired of seeing it. And when we begin, you know, we talk about evolving and we talk about just all the things that we've done as black people and what we faced in 2020 and where we're trying to go and positivity and stuff. I'm sorry. And some of y'all are not going to receive this because your mind is just stuck on the fact that I hate Giselle and I hate Kenya. I don't hate anybody, but I will, I will agree with you. I do dislike Giselle and I do dislike Kenya Moore's character quite vehemently. Um, nevertheless, outside of my own disdain for the both of them, um, I think that psychologically and spiritually what their characters and the representation that they present on this show, I think it does a lot of harm to us as people. And so many of y'all think the physical violence and the cattiness is what's um, what's what's so damaging to black women and y'all so tied to that stereotype but I don't see how y'all don't understand and recognize what Giselle and Kenya represent and who they are at their core is far worse representation of black women than somebody getting catty and throwing a drink in a damn restaurant um, and it seems as if for whatever reason we keep getting stuck with these types of characters um, you know I, I, I know a little inside tea and another part of Monique quitting Potomac and her frustration was the fact that they seemed to protect and insulate Giselle Bryant. Um, you know, I got I got some word on the curb, from the curb, that that reunion as it relates to, to Giselle and the way she was acting was far worse than what we saw. And at some point, Giselle became completely unraveled and screamed, fuck you, to Chris Samuels. And it was never shown. Why? You know what I'm saying? So it, it, when you start putting the pieces together, the people who get protected, the people who don't get protected, the people who get the, the good edit versus those that don't, there are a lot of moving pieces over there that just make you say, hmm. Um, that being said, I wish a space could be created where NeNe Leaks can be heard without all the fluff of her past and her attitude in her prior actions and the notion that you didn't have no problem when you was in their good graces and cashing them checks. Um, you know, something else that I found out that I did not know, I did not know that Watch What Happens Live was Nene Leakes' idea. It was a show idea that she pitched to Andy and he just opted to do it in exchange for giving her more appearances on the show than anyone else. I didn't know that. I found that piece of information out, which also lent itself to give her a little bit more credence in her situation about fair treatment and mistreatment over there at Bravo. I don't know, guys. We are witnessing a big shift. There's definitely a shift in the ties, and it should be interesting to see where this thing is going to go. Y'all, people are paying attention. They hear us. Drop down in the comments and give your feedback, your ideas. What new style of television producing would you like to see? What type of shows would you like to see? What do you want to see with these old uh, helpers that's on this TV show already? Um, what? I don't know. Let's just talk about it. And I'll call y'all later. Bye.